Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, the tea-drinking author who has a cup of Twinings ginger and lemon tea, somewhat precariously balanced just the other side of the cable for this microphone, which is alarming. Today, I've got a little story for you first. Many, many years ago, when I first started selling books moderately successfully, my first good-sized royalty check went into a collection of P.G. Woodhouse's books. I bought 95 books by P.G. Woodhouse, which was almost all that he had written, not quite all, because not all were in print. But that was wonderful. The second time I had a really rather good paycheck was a year later when I spent some money on a Conway Stewart Black Churchill Collector's Edition fountain pen. And the reason why was I'd always wanted to get a decent fountain pen. I've always liked fountain pens, as you can probably tell from any of my videos. And I wanted something that would look nice, that I could use in meetings with the Crime Writers Association, that I could use to sign uh, contracts with, with publishers. Something that was just nice and I thought reflected writing. So I bought my Conway Stewart and it was a Conway Stewart purely because when I was researching Mont Blanc, Visconti and all these other wonderful pen manufacturers, I discovered that Conway Stewart were made just down the road on the other side of Dartmoor. And I thought, well, that actually means very few travelled miles to get to my house. And so I bought it and it was lovely and it still is lovely and it's still serving very well. However, that was the beginning of a relationship because I then got to meet the managing director of Conway Stewart. I chatted to him. We collaborated to make the Michael Jex fountain pen, which is a collectible. It's basically a Winston from Conway Stewart, but it's designed with a different top to the cap. So it's basically the first of the detection collection. The second pen in that collection was going to be one designed for Alexander McCall Smith. But unfortunately, Conway Stewart hit difficult times and the company was closed and sold off. And that's when it hit a new existence because the parts and the name and everything were bought up by Bespoke British Pens, which is a delightful company which sadly isn't based in Tavistock. They're based down on the south coast uh, in Dorset or West Sussex, I forget exactly which. And they are a delightful company to deal with. And as a result, I have purchased several other pens. And not only that, I'm also starting to collect a bunch of other stuff, like desk blotters and a blotting rolling... What do you call it? It's a blotter, but it's um, different. And it's nice. I'll show you it in a minute. But then again, they sometimes come through and send these other wonderful things. So let's have a look and see what's inside here. However, before I do that, I've got to just have a quick shout out and say thanks ever so much to all the people who are on Patreon and those people who buy me cups of coffee every now and again. They buy me a coffee. If you want to help support this channel, those are the best ways of doing it. You can go down the bottom and there's... Patreon, buy me a coffee, there's super thanks, all that sort of rubbish. In the meantime, it also really helps if you like any videos you see that you enjoy and subscribe and then hit the bell button so you're notified of new videos. Doesn't cost much, but it does mean that YouTube shoved me further up their rankings. And that's always nice. So, thank you very much. And now let's slip over and see what's inside this box. So, here we start start off with a couple of my favourite things. What have we got? We've got a Conway Stewart desk blotter. We've got a rocking blotter, which as you can see is used quite regularly for all my signatures. And I do like that silver plate. It's rather pretty. And we've got a Conway Stewart pen. This is one of my favourites. This is the delightful little limited edition Conway Stewart, which is a Model 58, I think. And... The nice thing is, it's the Indiana Jones pen, and I always loved 
all of the Indiana Jones films, and I'm looking forward to next year when apparently there's going to be a new one. But, that's by the by. What have we got here? We have a neat black box. Let's open it. What's inside? Well, first of all, let's just say that I appreciate firms that produce nice packaging. This is really nice. It's a robust cardboard box in black. Really well made, very professional, very nice. And inside we have this nice, um, what do you call it? It's not rice paper, but it's very fine paper. And enclosed within is this, which is a burgundy leather notebook. Delightful ivory coloured paper. It comes with its own bookmark and it comes with its leather cover. And I think it's rather magnificent. So let's just have a look at it. The leather is mm, very appealing in, in, in terms of the odour. The, the cover itself can take refills naturally enough. Now this is a rather good looking notebook and from looking at the back, at the spine, it looks like it's going to open up fully without any great difficulty. It doesn't want to actually break that spine but I think you can write on that perfectly happily. That's good. Like it. The cover, this is really rather wonderful. You've got a pocket here so you can keep a business card or a, just a little note of what your address is so people can return it to you. It has a closing strap so that when you want to you can just pull this straight over the front and keep everything neat and tidy. However, what it also means is that if you've got spare bits of paper and stuff that you want to keep, you can keep them inside that, inside the back cover, and that will hold them fairly securely as well. What else can I say about it? Apart from that wonderful smell, it's also got a suede interior. That is a really nice touch. I wasn't expecting that. In terms of manufacturing quality, this is really rather lovely. Very, very nice indeed. So let's have a look at this notebook. Card cover, it's got a firm insert. I think this white is the actual card. Just gives it a little bit of rigidity, which is nice. I don't know how many pages there are in this. I will check and put a note down here somewhere. Here's my finger. I'm going to put a note down here somewhere. When I've had a chance to check that. Let's just fit this back into its cover. It would be nice if there was page numbering. It would be nice to have something along the lines of a date mark at the top, but you can write all that sort of thing in yourself. Basically this is a no-nonsense, no fripperies notebook which is rather nice just from that point of view. I do like the fact that it has the Conway Stewart brand mark and so on. That's nice. And when it's all shut up, let's just... This is a little more difficult just because I've taken the notebook out. It seats very well. Good functioning bookmark. Rather nice ribbon. Uh, you don't only get these in red, you can have them in black, you can have them in green, I think. So there's a number of colours to suit every taste. But I have to admit, that is a, it's a good size. It's what?
It's about three quarters of an inch thick, which is roughly two centimetres. So it's a good size. You know you've got a bunch of interesting paper there and feels really good in the hand. Now, of course, the main thing about a notebook is nothing to do with what it looks like. It is how will it work when you're writing on it. So let's just take a pencil Very nice, smooth feel to it, absolutely great for pencil. But what I've also done is I've filled my little Model 58 with some nice ink. What ink? Well, I thought, apart from anything else, it would be nice to see how well this paper copes with a very dark ink. So I've put in Baltic Memories from KWZ. Two reasons. First reason is I wanted to see how the paper coped with a very wet pen, which this bold Conway Stewart is definitely a very wet pen. So how does the paper cope? Oh my word, no sign coming through. That That is impressive and very pleasing. The other thing is, when this ink has dried, it's a shimmering ink and it will show, hopefully, how the paper copes with a shimmering effect. If you don't want a shimmering effect, then you can also just use a straightforward ink. Now I'm doing a bunch of editing and have been for some time, so I've got this Bastion loaded with Romanian red from Dominant Industries, which is have I got that name right? It is Dominant Industry, isn't it? Yes, it is Dominant Industry, and. I do find this really rather a nice one. It dries to a sort of duller red, but it stands out really nicely when I'm writing. And can't ask for much more than that, really. Let's just make sure. So the red doesn't come through. There's a very slight, very faint ghosting, but really nothing to, to complain about. So let me just um, hold this up to the light. Excuse me one moment. Yes, I don't know if this is going to show at all here. I will just rotate the page in front of the camera in case it works. But I can say that it's not the very best sheening effect I've had from Baltic Memories. That would still be, I think, on Tomo River. However, it is very acceptable. So if you like your sheening inks, this notebook is not bad. However, I think most people aren't going to worry about that, because although some of us do like sheening inks, I like them occasionally, just as a change. But it's not something that makes me pick my paper. It's not something that makes me pick my ink, to be fair. But that cover is glorious. Really well made, very robust, highly appealing, would look good in any business situation. Not bad. Highly recommended, actually. I love that. There's something very odd about sitting in a chair here and being aware constantly that the chair's trying to run downhill that away. Anyway, there you have it. One rather lovely notebook. What I do like is that it's sort of soft covers, but sort of robust covers. It gives it a really good feel in the hand. And it does smell glorious. Anyway, hope that was interesting. Hope that was fun. Don't forget, 
If you liked it, hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell and share and all those good things. If you're interested in supporting the channel, then you can go down the bottom of this Patreon and buy me a coffee and all of those other good things. But in the meantime, I'm now going to go edit this, get this done for this afternoon. I hope you all found that interesting. And in the meantime, here's a couple of silly um, shots of dogs playing. Because it makes me giggle. I hope it does you too. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.